Hi guys, welcome to our channel of Sciences and Mathematics. Today we're going to deal with the structure of a basic organic molecule, of course, that is the structure of benzene. And we're going to see how different parts of the benzene molecule, of course, dictate its nature of the physical and chemical properties. So without further ado, thank you and welcome. So as I've mentioned today, we're going to learn about the structure of benzene. It's a short concept that we are supposed to learn, of course, which is going to assist us to determine its physical and chemical properties. Of course, our sisters interpret any information that we may come across that pertains to the benzene molecule. So in this case, uh, benzene, of course, is a liquid at room temperature, and which is a good solvent. So in this case, the physical properties, benzene is a liquid at room temperature. This is a liquid at room temperature. Of course, we should when we study in the topics in physical chemistry, we know about the standard temperature, room temperature, so we just assume that it's 25 degrees. Of course, there are different conversions for temperature for Fahrenheit and then for Kelvins, which we're going to look in different topics of, or which we have covered in uh, some of our videos. So this is a liquid at room temperature, and then it's a good organic solvent, but it is toxic. Of course, we're going to learn about the concept of carcinogenic or carcinogens, when we shall talk about uh, the, the concept of uh, cancer, uh, substances which can be able to, to trigger cancer. It's a good organic solvent. And then lastly, we have talked about uh, it being toxic. Benzene is toxic, and we have said that is uh, carcinogenic, which means it can trigger cancer, trigger the condition of cancer. So in this case, these are some of the short or brief properties of benzene. We're going to learn other additional ones as we go by, or maybe some of the, the, the characteristics of its derivatives. So in this case, uh, in this topic for today, I'm, I'm going to mention a few terms that we've talked in one of our videos pertaining to the concept of, uh, of course, the reaction, but it's going to be basic and relevant to this. So we talked about in one of our videos about the concept of uh, sigma. This is sigma and pi. And these ones were under the topic of bonding. And we mentioned that in benzene we have got sigma and pi bonds, and we said that the sigma bonds are the ones that uh, result from the linear or collinear overlapping, or collinear or coaxial, that is linear or coaxial overlapping of atomic orbitals, whereas for pi bonds they are formed by the parallel. Parallel or lateral. Lateral in actual sense means side by side. This is, so the pi bonds are formed by parallel or lateral overlapping of a atomic orbital. So if I give an example of a p orbital along this line, let me say this is x y. So if there is another orbital, this is a, another orbital. So the interaction of these two different orbitals that I've shown on the board at this particular point, when they wrap or uh, of course interact side by side or using the parallel or lateral, that is what we call a pi bond, and we're going to represent it using that symbol that is generally basic in mathematics and uh, physics. So that's its symbol for that. And then when when orbitals interact just i'm going to do a question so you can have a different set of orbitals along this axis so which are interacting through linear or coaxial so along this line these orbitals are interacting at this point they are bonded at this point so this kind of a <coughs> point here or the bonding that is here there is what we call the schema and the schema bond is uh, bonding that results from the collinear or 
coaxial interaction of atomic orbitals. So that one said and done <coughs> for the purpose of the concept that we have discussed about, we're going to see that uh, benzene is a, a planar molecule, which means it is atoms, because we talked about the tanitin double and single bonds. So if I draw this illustration here, at these specific points we have carbon atoms and the, the various orbitals at each individual atom. I can just use that rough sketch to represent that concept that I'm talking about in the pi and sigma bonds. So when we talk about a planar molecule, a planar means that all the atoms lie on the same plane. So a planar for a planar molecules, all the atoms lie on the same plane. And from basic geometry, we know that a plane is a two-dimensional figure that extends indefinitely in or infinitely on four sides. So that case, that is what it refers to the term a planar molecule. So benzene is a planar molecule in that case, of course. And we have said that uh, <coughs> it's a liquid at room temperature, which is a good solvent, but it is toxic. And in this case, we have given it a term that is we have referred to as carcinogenic. Now, going to the structure of benzene, I'm going to use two representations. Of course, from, from our various topics that we have discussed in some of our videos about the structure of molecules on how to represent organic molecules, of course, we talked about the concept of a compressed formula. And this one we can have CH2 or maybe CH3. This is a compressed formula for, for carbon atom, and this is an alkene. For, this is a four, four carbon atom molecule, that's an alke, alkene, single bond. So this is a butane for that case. So this is a compressed, this is a compressed formula, representation of this kind of an alkene that we have called, of course, uh, butane. So in this case, we have different kinds of, uh, we have an expanded structure, compressed structure. For instance, if I try to draw the, the compound that I've given the formula for that case, that flat, this is a, uh, H, H, and then we have that one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So that's an expanded formula for that kind of a molecule that we have called butane. And it falls under the class of alkenes, that's uh, for organic compounds. So in this case, we can as well have the line structure for this kind of a molecule. So the line structure representation which we can represent as this. And we say that at each junction of this is a carbon atom and their respective hydrogen atoms which are completing the octet, to, uh, octet uh, state for that kind of a molecule in order for it to gain stability. So in this case, when we talk about uh, benzene, it's going to fall under a class of organic compounds that we talked about, of course, which has got alternating double bonds. It's a cyclic compound and we have talked about the concept of it being planar. So if I put two representations for this kind of a molecule, benzene can be drawn using this first structure or the second one here. So at any point when I'm going to represent a benzene molecule or in our discussions using either of these two structures, it just means the same but the same thing. So in this case, the first structure, this is known as a Kekule, Kekule structure. Kekule structure, while the second one is known as the Robinson, Robinson structure. So whenever we come across these two different structures, so of course we shall be measuring them in any case, there's no need, then we shall be using one on behalf of another.
So in this case, we are going to see also that uh, <coughs> it's a concept of resonance that we are going to learn about in this module, especially for the first one. Now, for the sake of representing it, because the second one, for it to visualize the concept of, uh, of course, uh, resonance, it's a difficult form. But for the, the, the calculus structure, it's going to be easier. So this particular kind of a structure, which we call the calculus structure, can as well be represented as this. So this double bond can relocate to this point, and then we have this. So that's why we are talking about the concept of a resonance. And we're going to see that the benzene molecule can exhibit different resonance structures. And of course, uh, benzene as a molecule is a resonance hybrid structure, which of course has been confirmed by experiments of uh, X-ray diffraction. So benzene has been confirmed to be a, a resonance hybrid structure using the X-ray diffraction, diffraction method. Of course, that's uh, to do with the uh, studying of bonds, bond lines, etc. So in this case, uh, of course, uh, <clears throat> the resonance structures are another form of representing the dots, the Lewis dot structure. Of course, <coughs> we also talk, talked about in one of our videos about the electronic dot notation for representing what the molecules. For instance, we talked about hydrogen as having a single bond. And since it exists as a diatomic molecule, then you can be able to represent it there using that. So this one is representing the bonding in between the hydrogens and this is a covalent bond which means each of the hydrogen atom has donated one electron for them to form a bond and gain stability. So in this case, uh, <coughs> for the structure of benzene, we're also going to see that uh, whenever it forms compounds or it uh, forms, of course, uh, other structures or complex structures with other molecules, it's going to ex exhibit different characteristics, like the resonance that we've talked about. So for now, we're going to look at uh, just an example or illustration of one of the resonance structures of a substituted benzene that we call aniline. Aniline is a substituted benzene that has got an amine group at one of the points in the molecule. So I'm going to just have a small illustration and then we just have a summary of what we have discussed and then finish that case. So as I've mentioned about the concept of uh, resonance structures, this is going to assist us in, in trying to interpret and figure out how electrophilic substitution processes take place or nucleophilic substitution in these benzene molecules and other organic reactions. So in this case, as I've said that uh, the, 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 the resonance structure gives a possible configuration for either the double bond or the double bond pair of uh, electrons on atoms, especially for the substitutes which have been included or added to the benzene molecule. So I've talked about an example of aniline. And I've said is that aniline is a benzene which has been substituted using that amine group. So in this case, we shall have uh, this molecule for benzene. And then we are going to have different resonance structures which are dictated by the bond pair of electrons which we have said, which are at this particular point. So we have a lone pair of electron at this point in nitrogen. So in this case, uh, we are going to see how the, that one behaves. Of course, when this lone pair of electrons move at that point, is uh, also that, that, that will be the subsequent step that is going to occur. And then we are going to have a resonance structure for that second molecule that is going to have those double bonds at those points, and then we have uh, an excess charge there, or that is a negative charge for electrons. And this now is a deficit of the number of electrons that were present there at this point, and we shall have a positive charge at that particular point. So it forms a polarized molecule of that nature. So from this second molecule that we have seen, there is a formation of a double bond at this point, and then there is an net negative charge at that point and a positive one there that is forming a polarized molecule. So we have we have this charge moving to this point. Of course, because of stability, this bond 
for the ring molecule we move to that point and then we shall have a negative charge net negative charge at that point and that will form a resonance structure with the second molecule of course which is uh, going to also have this double bond here and then there's a positive charge there from the initial electrons that we are moved so if this charge moves to this point and then this one is going to move to that to that double bond so we're going to have a negative net negative charge there and then a double bond at this point and this and then we shall have this uh, positive charge at that amine and then of course we are going to have a, a next step so those double arrows means that the molecule can resonate between those points and there those are the different representations of post proliferations for the double bond and the lone pair of electrons that were moved from the amine group so in that case for the last one it's going to form a, a bond at that point so this one is going to move here and then this one is going to move at that point so that pair of electrons has moved through the cycle and then we shall have that molecule forming now a stable one that was uh, the initial molecule that is amine and then we have So in this case, there are various steps that we're going to look at and see in some of the reactions like uh, electrophilic substitution aromatic reactions, whereby you find that the restoration of uh, aromaticity in a compound after a reaction or an interaction with a nucleophile or an electrophile. So in this case, we have this kind of uh, resonance structures that occur when, of course, the a molecule like aniline is interacting. And this is going to dictate the subsequent reactions of this Kind of a molecule so in this case this is very basic for the structure of benzene because next we are going to look at different substituted compounds for benzene and some of them are going to behave in a different way in that maybe the electrophile or the nucleophile at this particular point is going to direct or dictate on how a next substitution is going to take place so in this case of course for us to just have a summary of what we have discussed <coughs> Our best discussion was centered around the structure of benzene and of course we have said that there are two representations of the structures of benzene that we can be able to do and the first one we have said is the Cooley structure that is represented like that and then the second one is a Robinson structure that is represented like that and then we have talked about the aspect of resonance and of course one of our videos we talked about the concept of substitution of the hydrogens at, a, at this specific point and then when the arene double bond interact with other molecules, either it forms new bonds or there's a bond breakage. Of course, we're going to see that in other molecules <coughs> or there's a substitution or maybe substitution elimination ETC. But with that one, it's going to appear in other discussions. So we have <coughs> this Kekule structure and the Robinson structure. So we're going to use the aid of them to be to to represent what we have already said so in summary <coughs> this is the structure of benzene and then of course lastly when we were talking about naming of alkene as you can see that benzene is a has got double bonds so we can just use a different way of giving it a, of course an IUPAC name but that one is <coughs> of course the recommended one is the the one that we have kept kept on using because it's the one that is going to be able or the one that is going to be commonly used in one of the or in all our discussions so in this case of course as we can see we have said that it's a cyclic compound whenever we are mentioning a cyclic compound we start with the prefix cyclo and then number two it's a six numbered ring so it falls under the from the parent alkane series exam and then lastly, <coughs> it has got three double bonds, so this is a drag in. So if we were to give it a name, of course, we will start with uh, the term cyclo. And then we have the, the name from the 
parental gain series hexa and then we have so naming it we start we give the double bond the lowest possible numbers combination so this is so for that case for that rule we're not going to use this and clockwise direction so you use this one for this model you can see this number two three four five six so we have the molecules attached for the, and I mean the double bonds for this serine molecule attached at point number one, three, and five. So this is one, three, five, try, in. So this suffix represents an alkene, an alkene, and alkene, alkene of course. So that's so it is cyclohexane one, three, five, hexa one, three, five, try, in. And then we said about this, and it's not included. It's especially because we want to eliminate the possibility of a consonant, consonant appearing at that point, or maybe a vowel, vowel appearing at that point. So for that case, <coughs> that's it for today, guys. So I hope this topic is going to assist us in trying to interpret some of uh, the subsequent videos that we're going to do. So without further ado, we'll stop there. God bless you. Bye.